Hey everyone, Jamie Lee here from Bird Tricks with my son Connor here, Lily, and today's video is kind of going off of my last video, if you saw it, about how to choose an avian veterinarian and then what to run away from if you see those red flags. Today's video is kind of going over, all right, you finally found an ideal vet for your bird, and now what do you expect? And this video is to educate you about the things that I've kind of learned along the way of my bird care journey. We all start not knowing, <laughs> and so there should never be any shaming, and I know that a lot of that goes on in forums, and so sometimes we can feel too scared to ask questions. And that's never a community or an atmosphere that I wanna create. So I wanna see an avian community that's open and honest where we're not afraid to admit our mistakes so that others can learn from them, as well as share information openly. So I'm gonna talk about kind of the experiences that I've had with some veterinarians. I've had experiences with non-avian vets, avian vets, exotic vets, kind of the whole the whole thing. Um, for those of you that are new to the channel, my husband and I usually travel as entertainers, which hasn't been happening lately. But <laughs> back in the normal days, we traveled a lot and we traveled with our birds. And in order to do that, you have to get special permits. You have to have pet passports, CITES permits, import and export permits. You have to have health certification uh, for the birds. And that's usually done 10 days in advance of coming and going. And so a lot of the times we would have to have a USDA and US Fish and Wildlife come out and inspect our birds and make sure that they were healthy and we weren't bringing any sort of uh, diseases or infections or sick animals back into the country whenever we were traveling around. And so in this way, we got to know a lot of different veterinarians and their preferences because just as trainers, just as people, uh, vets kind of have their own things that they like to do and they don't all agree on the best method of doing things. So. I kind of wanted to make this video to clear up a few things and get a few basic expectations out there on what to expect from your annual exam. Those of you not doing an annual exam with your bird, please do. Um, even if you need to travel, it's just something that happens once a year. I have had this done in numerous states, depending on where I'm traveling to, and by some really, really amazing vets. Um, it's a big difference if you go to an actual avian vet, because a lot of them can do all the blood work and stuff right in-house and have results for you really quickly. Whereas non-avian vets, will, can, they can still take the blood, but they have to send it out to a lab and then you're waiting days and days to find out what the results were. So it's not as efficient, I guess you could say. So the first time I experienced an avian vet, I was blown away that they were reading me my lab results like right then and there. <laughs> Okay, so what to expect from an annual exam? Number one would just be that there's an interest in your bird's history from your veterinarian. So they wanna know where you got the bird, how long you've had the bird, did you raise it from a baby, did you adopt it from somebody, how many homes has it been through? Just kind of a brief history um, so that they can learn your experience level with the bird and just also get a baseline of how long you've had it so that their health history is fairly accurate. If there's a lot of unknown out there, um, it kind of goes into what they're gonna find out about your bird. So another thing is that you'll wanna make sure that you've kind of given a brief description. Now, I've always laughed at these descriptions at my avian vet uh, where it'll just be like, what does the bird look like? And it's like, well, <laughs> some conures tend to look the same. But if they have some sort of identifying marks, like if you've microchipped your bird or if your bird still has its leg band on, uh, you wanna write all that down so that they have it in their files and in their notes that that's your bird's microchip number and that's your bird's leg band number. It's just kind of an identifier for it when it comes into use later. And also I have three sun conures, so sometimes it can be really hard to tell them apart when they're flying around. Um, Whereas if you get that leg band number, you know, okay, this one's Lily, this one's Phoebe, this one's Dietka. So they do have some identifying marks as well as their little features, but for a vet tech or somebody in the office needing to be able to tell them apart, the leg band's gonna be the most effective. 
So something that I tell all of my clients, all of the people that watch my YouTube videos, everything is to be weighing your bird consistently. Um, this is so that you have an idea of your normal weight range for your birds. Some birds really fluctuate during hormone season uh, and so do their appetites. So understanding that will help you from freaking out during that time when you do see that natural fluctuation. Also, there's a general fluctuation with birds from their empty weights to their full weights and a little bit in between. Um, so having, having an idea and an understanding of that before you go into your vet's office is kind of nice, but also if your vet is getting the weight of your bird, they're going to track it for you as well. And if you're going at the same time every year, you can expect a, a fairly safe fluctuation and range that your vet will be able to say like, yeah, that's normal or no, your bird has lost too much weight or maybe your bird's getting a little chunky. Uh, they'll be able to tell you, but more important than weight, I would say, um, because weight is more of a tool of kind of finding out if your bird is sick. Uh, just because they're prey animals, they hide illness until they can't any longer, which is usually when it's really, really serious and oftentimes too late. But more important than that is the body condition. And this is something that your vet can tell you. When I was in Australia, uh, the vet there did a body condition based on a scale of one to five. Every vet might do it a little bit differently, but they'll explain their body condition numbers to you so you know that what you're trying to get for. I remember listening to the body condition talk one time and I was like, so am I trying to get to a five? And they were just like, no, definitely not. <laughs> um, so they'll have their different weight ranges. I won't say it here. I have another video on it as part of my Patreon series um, where I did a vet series with uh, veterinarian Matt Gosbell and he really goes into it way better than I can do it justice here. But make Make sure that you're getting a body condition number from your veterinarian on every single annual well bird check. Also just for clarification, the well bird check with the body condition is just telling you if your bird is underweight, overweight, if it's muscular, if it's atrophied, they'll be able to feel everything as far as body condition and be able to tell you like, yeah, you, the weight that you have is a great weight for your bird, or they'll be able to tell you like you need to put a little bit more weight on your bird. Uh, maybe through certain vegetables, through certain foods, or a certain amount of exercise. Oh, I thought you were leaving. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're back on that side? Really, girl, you're so quiet. It's kind of a treat. Another thing you can expect from your annual exam is just kind of a physical check. So this is something that happened upon import and export of our own birds. We would have a veterinarian come on and inspect them and make sure that they're not having any discharge from their eyes or nares. Do you want to go somewhere? You can go somewhere. Uh, so they're just kind of inspecting for obvious signs of of sickness or ill health. So are their eyes dripping or do they look like they're in pain? Or do they have discharge from their nares? Um, you know, is their poop all smeared up on their underside or hanging there where they can't totally dislodge it? Um, how do their beaks and nails look? Like, are they overgrown? Um, are they curling over? You know, are they uncomfortably long? Are they the correct, um, Oh my gosh, what's the word? But you know, like when they get scissor beak where the alignment is off, they wanna check for that. So these are all things that would be done in the physical exam where your veterinarian would be able to spot and say, okay, so you're having an issue with A, B, or C. Um, so the physical exam is really, really important. Also, they're gonna be checking for like lumps, Gosh, if you guys have ever seen cysts or like fatty lumps in birds, it is awful. It looks so uncomfortable. So they might be looking for things like that. They're also gonna be examining your bird's feather condition. Maybe you have a bird that's starting to overpreen and you haven't noticed and your vet will be able to point that out or just the feather condition's looking kind of ratty and you didn't know that your bird should be taking a bath. Um, just things like that where they're really looking over the overall feather quality of your bird as well and making sure that your bird just overall physically looks good. So upon bringing our birds back into the US, they would always do these swabs where they would swab both the beak and the cloaca and that's just kind of basically your bird's bum. Um, looking for any sort of bacterial infections or bacteria that they don't like. Uh, this is something that most vets will do one or the other, uh, but you do have some vets that will do both. Um, I don't think I have a preference. It's probably more comfortable for the bird to do the beak. So the three tests that my birds always get in an annual exam is they get their CBC profile, which is basically just fancy words for their blood work. It stands for 
um, complete blood count, and that's gonna give you your white cell blood count, your red cell blood count, and basically the CBC profile is what detects uh, illness or condition. So that's why it's so important, and that is where they draw blood so that they can run these blood tests for your bird. The other test that we are very accustomed to getting, especially when bringing our birds back into the US, is a bacterial culture. But that will basically search for a bacterial infection that you would then treat with antibiotics. Now, bacterial infections are so, so common with pet birds. A lot of the times we may think that our bird is being crabby when in fact they actually have a bacteria infection. We just experienced this with a uh, project bird named Sunny who had a bacteria infection for who knows how long uh, before we caught it just by doing his annual exam. The third thing is the fecal gram, skin, gram stain. So this is basically a poop smear. So they take a sample of your bird's poop, usually there at the veterinary office, and they smear it on a slide and they go look at it in a uh, microscope. Really good stuff. What, are you going somewhere? So the, the poop stain, I guess you could call it, is really, really handy if your bird's poop is looking abnormal. If something's funky about it and you're just like, I don't know what's going on, I always recommend this, but I recommend it even if your bird's poop looks good because then you have something to refer back to in your vet's records of keeping track of your bird's health. So a couple of ways that some vets will take blood. Um, I find that the more experienced vets tend to prefer taking blood out of the jugular vein in the bird's neck. Now this looks really, really scary, but it's a much bigger vein and it's usually easier, easier for them to get blood from and get enough blood. I had an experience where a vet went for the, the vein in my bird's legs for the blood and they struggled getting enough blood out of there and it was just, it was a lot. When you have to keep going back again and again and again and poking the bird to get blood, you are just upping the stress level which is going to most likely give you now an inaccurate white cell blood count and it'll be abnormally high because they're under a lot of stress than they would normally be. So it can kind of give you a wrong impression of your bird's health by how much stress it endures. So I have known that some people will just come in and put their bird under uh, to get everything done so that it's as minimally stressful as possible. But I know a lot of people don't feel great about anesthesia. So it really depends on what's gonna get, what's going to be the least stressful for your bird. My birds are pretty accustomed to this, so as long as they don't have to be poked and prodded multiple times, they're gonna be pretty great about the exam. I will say though, they got a little bit worse after that experience where they did get poked multiple times. Um, and I prefer a vet who's just comfortable with the jugular so that I know it's only gonna take one poke to get all the blood that they need. So then I think the last thing that most vets are looking for is listening to the heart and lungs just to make sure there's no respiratory issues. Uh, these are pretty common with birds just because they're living in captivity with us and they're exposed to things they wouldn't normally be. So normally in nature, in the wild, they would have fresh air all the time. And in our homes, you know, we are often doing things to our air to make it smell nice or spraying things or diffusing things that might make our birds feel dirty or they might be inhaling. We might be a smoker and think that we're doing good by them by going in the other room and not understanding how much residue is actually on them. So just things like that will really bring to light what's going on with your bird and its overall health. I will say my recommendation when going and getting your bird's annual is just to go ahead and get the blood work out of the way first. That's the most important. That's going to give you so much data. Um, and you want it to be as stress-free as possible so that you're not getting inaccurate results. So I would say just go in, have the blood work side of things done, and then move on to the other things that can be examined, like a physical exam and all of that. Um, and then talk to your vet about what your concerns are. Or before ever taking the bird out, you could always talk about what your concerns are going in. Um, but just keep it brief so that you can really spend your time chatting it up and getting educated about everything after your bird has already been through the trauma. There's nothing worse than waiting in the doctor's room knowing that you're gonna get a shot and having all that time to anticipate the worst and really build it up in your mind. And our birds can tend to do that too. They know that they're in the vet's office, so you just kind of want to get the worst out of the way first and then kind of go into everything that you're there for. Um, 
I recommend writing it all down. Since I have multiple birds, it can be hard to keep track of what I want to say about each one or what I might be concerned with with each one. And so I keep track in a little notepad and then bring that into the vet office with me. And once all the birds are out um, or if there's something particular about one bird that I have a question with, I might take that bird back out and just say, hey, you know, is this feathering coloring normal? Um, you know, I might bring in some molted feathers if I feel like some feather condition was off. You can always bring in data as well and bring in weight charts and things like that and just say, is this a normal fluctuation? Just make sure that you have the data to back it up. So you don't wanna be giving a vet a full weight and just a ton of full weights and then it gets in the morning of the appointment and gets an empty weight, that's gonna be a huge fluctuation. So it's gonna be a little scary. So make sure that you're bringing proper weight charts in and proper data in that uh, your vet understands. So you guys can kind of work on that history together and make reasonable pro progress in keeping your birds healthy, right? One of the feather condition things that would come up for Lily is that she's kind of over preened on her head and obviously she can't reach there. So it wasn't done by her, but this would be something where I would just want to tell the vet like, Hey, yeah, she's housed with two of her sisters and they tend to over preen her cute little head. Can you show them? Oh, you're gone. Okay. Well, I was going to show you, but apparently I'm not going to show you. She's embarrassed. Just kidding. Uh, but that would be something that I would bring up. Or if you have a bird out of your flock who isn't bathing as frequently as you want and you want to bring it up and just say, I can only get my ba my bird to bathe a couple times a month. What can I do? Does this feather condition look okay? And just kind of get those questions answered so that you're doing the best by your bird and really taking note of those things. Well, Lily, Lily, Lily. Oh, totally totally did that on purpose. You did that on purpose. <laughs> You're cute. So cute. Can you show them your head? So this is Lily's little head. Hold on. Lily's little head. So it tends to be a little over preened where you can see it should be a little bit more orange than it is yellow. Um, and that's because your sisters are just a little too enthusiastic about that preening little too enthusiastic. So one of the things my vet might tell me or encourage me to do is just house them separately a little bit more often so that Lily's head has a chance to regrow nicely um, and not be so over preened. And it doesn't really look that bad. So maybe they would say no big deal as long as she doesn't mind and they aren't fighting, which they aren't. But just things like that you can kind of keep in mind for advices that you might get from your veterinarian. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video of me and Lily about what to expect from your annual well bird exam. If there's any questions that you still have, please leave them in the comments below. And if you work with a really amazing avian veterinarian, please recommend them in the comments. People are always asking me who I recommend in different states. And unfortunately I haven't been to every city in every state to know which vets are really, really great. Um, but word of mouth goes a really long way. So if you guys feel awesome about your veterinarian, please leave it in the comments below. Keep in mind, if you cannot find an avian veterinarian, that other vets are capable of doing blood work on birds and then they send it out to a lab. And as long as they can decipher it for you, you're good to get an annual from them. But ideally, you're working with an avian veterinarian because they understand the intricacies of birds. Whereas most vets who are dealing with cats and dogs <clears throat> are not seeing the same sort of just minute differences with parrots. Um, they're just so sensitive in some ways and hardy in others. And it takes an avian veterinarian to really understand that. So uh, to each its own, I know it's incredibly hard to source avian vets. Uh, when I lived in Florida, it was so much easier. And now that I'm in Northern Idaho, my avian vet is about three hour drive from me. So in a case of an emergency, I would definitely have to go to a non avian vet. So make sure that you have a vet nearby that you can use for in case of emergencies that you're well acquainted with, who understands and is willing and open to reach out to other sources, even if it's that three hour vet that's, um, that is a way so that they can help each other and your bird has a fighting chance when things go wrong. Little baby. What a cute baby. Don't forget to like and subscribe.